Don King is famous for his work as a boxing promoter. He has a roster which includes a long list of boxing giants like Muhammad Ali, Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, and George Foreman. And Don King is also infamous for his shady reputation, which includes a long list of accusations like bribery, tax evasion, fraud, running gambling houses, rigging boxing matches, stealing from fighters he represented, stealing from charity, and even killing two men. Some of these accusations will remain accusations only, but he did kill two men, yet lived most of his life as a free man. Perhaps Don King is the real Teflon Don. Let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about your favorite and most scandalous celebrities from yesteryear that make the Ty Said What Ty Said channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream and comment I subscribed in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. Hate him or love him, Don King is one of the most successful promoters in the history of boxing. He promoted some of the biggest fights in the history of the sport, featuring the biggest names in the ring. So it only stands to reason that he has had an extremely lucrative career. While lucrative, his career has also been tarnished by scandal. Accusation after accusation, lawsuit after lawsuit, Many of the lawsuits filed against him were by the very same boxers he represented. And while it's not great to think of these boxers we may have admired having lost their money to someone who is seen as shady, it's better than them having lost their lives. Before Don King's name and hair became known to the world, he killed two people. The first was a man named Hillary Brown. Don King tried the traditional path and went to college, but he dropped out after just one year and began working in the illegal gambling industry in Cleveland, Ohio, his hometown. He controlled one of the biggest number rackets, and one day in 1954, Hillary Brown was reportedly trying to rob one of Don King's gambling houses, and as a result, Don shot and killed him. When the case went to court, Don King claimed that he had killed Hillary Brown in self-defense. This ended up being an argument with which the court agreed, and he walked free on justifiable homicide. The second man was Samuel Garrett. Twelve years after killing Hillary Brown, Don King was still in the same line of business, if you will, the numbers racket. And on April 20th, 1966, he got into an altercation with one of his employees, a 34-year-old man named Sam Garrett, on Cedar Avenue near East 100th Street in Cleveland. The altercation was over money. Some sources say that Don King claimed that his employee owed him $900, while Sam Garrett said that he only owed Don $600. Other sources say that the fight was always only over $600. Either way, the two men fought in the street, and that's the only detail about which all of the witnesses seemed to agree. On that day, Don King was taken into police custody, and Samuel Garrett was taken to a hospital, reported to be in poor condition, with a punctured eardrum and multiple head injuries, including a fractured jaw and a skull fracture. A news article from the following day reported that when the Green Beret police officers pulled Don King off of Samuel Garrett to arrest him, that Sam muttered, quote, how much do I owe you? How much do I owe you? End quote. Even though it's somewhat of a minor detail in the grand scheme of things, this does lead me to believe that the fight was about a discrepancy in the amount of money owed to Don King. What do you think? Did this fight escalate to this extreme simply because some money was owed, or was there an issue over the amount, 
comment below so that I can see your thoughts. Some witnesses said that they saw Don King kick Sam Garrett in the head three times. Others said that Don kicked him four times or even more. Some witnesses also said that they observed Don King strike Sam with a 38 caliber revolver before being pulled off of him by the two Cleveland police detectives. One of the arresting officers, Robert Tunn, reportedly described Don King's actions as, quote, a brutal, almost demonic assault, end quote. He said that he witnessed, quote, a man's head bouncing off of the asphalt pavement like a rubber ball, end quote. On the screen right now is Officer Robert Tun's witness statement. Among other things, when he approached the scene, he saw, quote, a colored male laying on the northerly sidewalk and another colored kicking him in the face and head, end quote. Maybe Don only hit him. Maybe he only kicked him. Maybe he pistol whipped him. Maybe he didn't. But one thing is for certain. Sam Garrett died in the hospital five days after this beating. Whether the fight was over $900 or $600 or the $300 discrepancy, he should not have had to pay the ultimate price. While this has nothing to do with the beating of Samuel Garrett, it's worth mentioning that at the time that Don King was arrested for his assault, he was already under indictment for federal tax violations there has always been something going on with Don King. Originally, Don King was arrested for aggravated assault. He was released on bail and was re-arrested on the day that Samuel Garrett passed away. That's what turned this whole case into a murder trial. During the trial in 1967, Don King used the same defense that he did the first time that he killed someone, self-defense. As he described the events of that night, Sam Garrett followed him out of a bar and threatened his life over the payoff amount. Don King said that he got out of his car and returned kicks from Sam Garrett, but that he never stomped on Garrett's face and he never hit him with a revolver. Now, he admitted that he had a revolver in his right hand, but according to him, he never used it for anything. According to Don King, he only used his left hand to punch. Now, the two detectives who stopped the beating testified that they did witness Don King kicking Sam Garrett in the head. With all of that testimony in mind, a jury had to deliberate. And after only four hours, the eight women and four men found Don King guilty of second degree murder. He was facing the potential of life in prison. Well, we all know that he didn't spend his life behind bars. I haven't been able to find the details of why there was a change, but there was. His charge ended up being reduced to voluntary manslaughter. He received a 15-year sentence, but he was paroled after serving only 3 years and 11 months in the Marion Correctional Institute. Eventually, in 1983, the governor of Ohio, James A. Rhodes, pardoned Don King for his crime. After his short stay in prison, Don King got into boxing promotion, a legal business, great, but he was still Don King and his shady ways remained with him. He quickly made a name for himself in his new legal profession by getting Muhammad Ali to participate in a charity boxing match to raise money for a hospital in Cleveland in 1972. It was the Forest City Hospital, which was underfunded and severely in need of cash. The fight raised $85,000. That has the same buying power of over $550,000 in today's money in 2021. But guess how much the hospital received? $1,500. Why? Because Don King took his usual cut of the purse 83% and he applied it to the money raised for charity, proving that Don King was always going to be Don King, whether he was dealing in illegal business or slightly legal business. 
It seems as though, no matter how underhanded Don King's dealings have been, he has somehow managed to have the law and luck on his side. He was sued by Larry Holmes and Muhammad Ali for cheating them out of their money. He managed to get away with paying them very small fractions of what they were owed, practically pennies on the dollar. The details of both of those lawsuits are actually quite sad, even heartbreaking in Muhammad Ali's case. One ironic time when the law wasn't on his side was in 2005 when Don King decided to sue ESPN for $2.5 billion for defamation, or as I bet Don King would have called it, besmirchifying his name. He sued them over a documentary revealing that he had killed two men. The court ruled ESPN had not knowingly made false statements and did not owe Don King any money. I mean, because he had killed two men. Getting away with crime and even murder is one thing, but being honored on top of that is totally crazy. Well, for years, Cleveland City Council had been planning to honor Don King by naming a street after him. In 2016, it was revealed to the public that the street the City Council had chosen was none other than Cedar Avenue. Remember that street name from the beginning of this story? It is the very street where Don King killed Samuel Garrett. The citizens were understandably horrified and the city council did not explain their choice, but at least they scrapped their plans. My sources for this video are sportscasting.com, Crime Museum, and Film Daily. If you want text notifications so that you can get a text 15 minutes before I release a video or 15 minutes before I live stream, simply send a text to 786 632-2135 to let me know that you want text and you will get an outgoing text message 15 minutes before I have a new video.com. If you have a business, product, service, YouTube channel, or social media account that you would like to promote on my channel, email me at taiwan at taisaidwhattaisaid.com to get rates for advertising on my community tab, my live streams, and or my edited videos, just like this one. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Thai Said What Thai Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook, that really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that applaud button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.